The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 616 All Comes Together I am afraid I have some news, Jordan announced, strolling into the Immortal Dreams library. The good news is that we have now reached his Valdi. The bad news is, well, his head crest drooped. Even though this ship is completely unaffected by weather, my navigational sensors are not, so instead of arriving during the evening as expected, it is now the middle of the night, as you're all no doubt aware. Jim Charles looked up from a chair where she was reading and raised an eyebrow, the room's sole occupant, save for Gerardo. Who are you talking to? Gerardo sighed at her. When a griffin has an announcement to make, he makes an announcement, even if there's but one soul to hear it. With that said, I've been flying for over a day straight and believe I am going to bed. Have a pleasant night. Hold up, Jemjar snapped, closing her book and catching his attention. I mean, wait, before you go, where's the will of Kiros you said was with that moon glass for puddles? I want to read it. Gerardo blinked, then shrugged. I'm hardly sure what you'll do with it, but yeah, I was poring over it earlier during our flight. This is a copy of the original, but return it in one piece, would you? He withdrew a scroll from his uniform and passed it to her, and Jam Jars took it in her telekinesis. Thanks, I'll put it on the bridge when I'm done. She immediately buried her nose in it, biting the corner of her tongue and letting the griffin go about his way. Starlight! A little hoof insistently jabbed Starlight's sleeping shoulder, not giving her time to wake before poking again. Starlight! Uh, Starlight grunted and waved a leg at the annoyance, cuddled against Maple and not wanting to wake up. Get up, Jim Jones's voice hissed. This is important! Groaning, Starlight realized this was, in fact, Jam Jars, and she was far too tenacious to take Go Back to Bed for an answer. Quietly, she extracted herself from the bed, made for the hallway, and didn't say a word until the door was closed again behind her. What? In the dim light reaching down the corridor from the library, James Jars looked visibly upset, far closer to losing her cool than Starlight had seen her before. James Jars beckoned her towards the light, moving quickly ahead, and Starlight followed. Have you seen this? James Jars quietly demanded, holding Gerardo's transcript of the will up to Starlight's face. I... Uh, Starlight frowned, quickly reading it. This sounds familiar. It's curious well. We found it and read it when we went back to Iron Ridge. I've seen it. Uh, she wanted to ask why, but quickly realized she had a very good guess already. His mercenary, Jim Jars said, slapping it against a small table with a hoof, was going around getting paid to look for whatever dumb, sorry mares who couldn't care for themselves he could find and give them more responsibilities they couldn't care for and Carol paid them off with moon glass so they couldn't complain, including my mother. Do you realize what this means? Starlight slumped her shoulders. There's a lot of things it means. Which one are you talking about? Jam Jars glared at the well. Do you know how long I've been mad at my mother for her willful negligence and having so many more foals than she could care for? Look at the way I've grown up. Look how much work I've had to do to better myself on my own because my parents were too overwhelmed to do their jobs properly. And this will says Kiro was specifically trying to make that happen to as many mares as possible? To put them in that situation whether they wanted to make bad choices or not? Starlight slowly nodded. It does. This is going on my list, Jam Jars warned. I'm taking this as a personal slight and Kiro is from Isvaldi. And do you know what else this will says? She raised an eyebrow. The most important job of Kiro's career was to guard Puddles' moonglass. But if Puddles was in Isvaldi as well as the pony who made her into a windigo, that means Isvaldi gave him the job to hide it. And this will doesn't say to take it back to Isvaldi. It says to take it to Gazelle, who is friends with Meltdown, who hunts down ponies who do bad things, and Puddles thought there were bad things for us to find down in the tunnels. 
I bet his volley was blackmailing him with something into something else, so if he died and someone got this will, they'd bring down the law on his volley and get revenge. And you know what I bet they were blackmailing him into doing? Starlight blinked. Wait, what? Slow down. You think Kiro says in his will to take Puddles' moon glass to Gazelle because it would make him suspicious of his Valdi? Maybe he's in league with him. I don't know. James just shrugged. But I did pick up from the last time we were here that the school here is attached to an orphanage. Orphans. Fools the mercenaries take in because their mothers can't care for them. Kiro, being from his Valdi, you have to admit all this sounds like it's connected, right? I'm not really following your logic, Stolly said. You're talking too fast. Start at the point you're making and work backwards from there. <sighs> Jim just huffed. Look, Kiro, Isvaldi, Puddles, and Gazelle are all related, and right now, I'm very mad about everything this will says about foals. So what if I made a few jumps in logic? My explanation fits everything we know, and it's that Isvaldi was blackmailing Kiro into doing that stuff with the Iron Ridge Mares in the Moonglass, and Kiro wrote this well because he wants us to get Gazelle to get his Valdi in trouble with Meltdown. Except that, how would Gazelle know what that piece of Moonglass was, or how it relates to Puddles? Starlight trees an eyebrow. And why would they have Kiro protect it if he might betray them? <sighs> James just sighed. Look, I'm good at hunches. I don't feel like sitting around, and what I do feel like doing right now is messing with his Valdi. There's obviously a conspiracy here, and I don't care if any of the parties involved get hurt except us, so this is all the more reason to go and get something to hold over them in case we need an escape card. So, are you coming or what? Stoli blinked. Coming? She stepped backwards, shying towards a chair. Wait, now? Jam Jars grinned, rolling up the will and stuffing it in her mane. To go see what Percival's up to? Duh! We just arrived, and it's the middle of the night, so even if someone thought we'd try something, they might not know yet. And even better, it's the middle of a rainstorm. Not only will that make us harder to see, and fewer guards want to be outside, but rain on the roof is romantic, so Percival will almost definitely be up to something. You in? Starlight sighed, rotating her ears upward and listening to the lack of rain on the roof. There was the energy comet doing its job. A rainstorm also means we'll get wet, she pointed out. You realize that, right? It's the price of victory. Jam Joy smugly flicked her with her tail as she walked by, a stiffness still in her step. Look, I'm mad and I'm not taking it out on you, so we're going to find someone who deserves it for me to take it out on. How's that? I don't know. Starlight followed along behind reluctantly, but still following. At the very least, she wasn't letting Jam Jars sneak off alone. Hey there, chum! High Prince Gazelle dropped out of a window, landing near Wallace Whitewing and streaming water from his fur in a higher corridor in Stormhoof Keep. That's quite the purposeful face you have, uh. What's the mission, Wallace, old friend? Prince. Wallace's grin was hard and set, more of a spark beneath it than usual. I've had an abrupt change in fortunes my delegation must be made aware of, but Isvaldi's wing in the Colosseum is empty, and I know for a fact Lord Percival is at home, so I was seeking someone to inform here instead. What, like Chauncey? Gazelle rolled his slitted eyes. Come now, he's boring. Any chance you could tell little old me instead? I love gossip, you know. Wallace let out a single chuckle. I'm more than twice your age, little prince. I must inform Isvaldi that the terms of our tournament sponsorship are changing. Thought I'd see if I couldn't entice them here for a summit. All the bigwigs at once? Gazelle made a huge show of counting on his feathers. That's... all two of them. Right. Isvaldi is such a tiny place sometimes. He hugged himself and shuddered. Long live Lord Percival and all that. Wouldn't exactly be my favorite province to inherit if their real lord kicked a bucket before Percival gets his lordship officially recognized. He lifted an eyebrow at Wallace. You are still playing at that, right? Wishing for his legitimacy if you win? Wallace grinned. Fear not, little prince. I'm here to reassure them that's precisely the plan. A word of encouragement as it will be. Might I ask you to keep quiet so I may tell them myself, though? 
Gazelle winked. My lips are sealed. What's the cause for panic, though? He nudged Wallace conspiratorially with a soggy shoulder. Tell me. Wallace's voice quieted. Morina's daughter has returned to us, he murmured. For real. I'm still not sure how you managed to lose her after the events in Goldoa, but she has not only been brought back, but fully restored to her true self. She has? Gazelle's eyes sparkled. Wonderful news! But fear not, fear not, I'll keep it on the down low, and do let me know what happened to her sometime, if you know that much. Meltdown's been going crazy trying to figure out how she disappeared. He half shrugged and grinned. A pleasure catching up with you. If I see Chauncey, I'll let him know you're in the market for an audience. Wallace bowed and continued his journey, leaving Gazelle behind, leaning casually against the wall. When Wallace was fully out of sight, Gazelle waited a little longer, seeing to it that no one was watching. Someone figured out the secret to getting Puddles back to normal, did they? He flexed his claw, shivering in anticipation, and smiled a terrible, wonderful, awful smile. Uh-oh. End of chapter 616